Next from Springfield, we attend the inauguration of the new state Senate as the Senate president nominations are held, followed by speeches from the elected Senate president and Senate minority leader. This runs about one hour. I hereby appoint the following persons as temporary Senate officers of the 99th General Assembly. Tim Anderson, Secretary of the Senate, and Joe Dominguez, Sergeant at Arms. The Secretary will now read the letter of certification from the State Board of Elections of Senate members elected on November 4th, 2014 to the 99th General Assembly. Mr. Secretary, please read the letter. Letter dated December 4th, 2014. Dear Mr. Anderson, a close is a list of individuals who have been elected to serve as members of the State Senate in the General Assembly and have been duly certified by the State Board of Elections at their board meeting on November 30th, 2014. If you have any questions or need additional information, please don't hesitate to contact me. Respectfully, Jane Gasparin, Director of Election Information. Newly elected Senators. Third District, Maddie Hunter, Chicago. Sixth District, John J. Cullerton, Chicago. Ninth District, Daniel Biss, Evanston. Twelfth District, Stephen Landeck, Bridgeview. Fifteenth District, Napoleon Harris, Harvey. Eighteenth District, Bill Cunningham, Chicago. Twenty-first District, Michael G. Connolly, Lyle. Twenty-fourth District, Chris Nybo, Elmhurst. Twenty-seventh District, Matt Murphy, Palatine. 30th District, Terry Link, Waukegan. 33rd District, Karen McConaughey, St. Charles. 36th District, Neil Anderson, Rock Island. 39th District, Don Harmon, Oak Park. 42nd District, Linda Holmes, Aurora. 45th District, Tim Bivens, Dixon. 48th District, Andy Menar, Bunker Hill. 51st District, Chapin Rose, Muhammad. 54th District, Kyle McCarter, Lebanon. And 57th District, James F. Claiborne, Jr. II, Belleville. Will Justice Mary Jane Tice of the Illinois Supreme Court please come to the rostrum to administer the oath of office to the members of the Senate? Will Senators elect Anderson and Nybo and Senator Bennett please rise and be sworn into office? Senators elect Anderson, Naibo, and Senator Bennett, will you please raise your hand, repeat after me, and insert your own name in the proper place. I state your name. Do solemnly swear. I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of State Senator, to the best of my ability. Congratulations to you all. Will the remaining senators who were re-elected in 2014 please stand? Please raise your right hands, repeat after me, and insert your name in the proper place. I state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of state senator to the best of my ability. Congratulations.
It is the intention of the chair to begin organizing the 99th General Assembly under the rules of the 98th General Assembly until new rules are adopted as part of the organization of the newly constituted General Assembly. The next order of business is the election of the President of the Senate of the 99th General Assembly. As required by Senate Rules 12-4 and 2-2B of the 98th General Assembly, 30 affirmative votes will be required to elect the President of the Senate. And before we open to nominations, I'd like to ask a small indulgence. I'd like to take just a moment to wish my good friend, Senator Marty Sandoval, a very happy birthday. Happy birthday, Marty. And many more. Nominations are now open. Senator Hain is recognized for the purpose of placing a name in nomination. Your Excellency, Governor Rahner, distinguished members of our court, distinguished constitutional officers, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, and citizens of Illinois. We gather here pursuant to the Constitution of Illinois in order to accomplish one of the most important functions of a republic, which is the organization of the legislative branch of government, made up of members elected by the people of Illinois. It is here that the laws will be fashioned according to the consent and desires of the citizens hopefully for the common good. It is well at this time to recall the twin foundations of our democracy. First, the Declaration of Independence, which sets forth clearly the fact that our nation and its government is based upon the dignity of every human being. Secondly, the Constitution of the United States and its, its derivative Constitution, that of, of Illinois, which limits the powers of government over the citizens and guarantees all citizens access to government. Free government, the consent of the governed, requires elected legislative bodies, which function by majority rule after arriving at decisions without coercion or corruption. That is why the Founding Fathers looked upon the legislative branch as the preeminent of the three branches of government. Free government is essentially, therefore, a process, a process at arriving as to what shall be the law. This legislative process is what James Madison described as ordered liberty. Ordered liberty, not mob rule, not demagoguery, not threats, but reason, debates, and deliberations and votes by the elected members of this chamber. Ordered liberty means the freedom of every senator of the people to propose laws, to debate such proposals, to freely vote for and against such proposals. To achieve this ordered process of a free government, we need leaders who understand it. We need leaders who have a fundamental respect for the deliberative system the genius of the American system. We need leaders who have a profound faith in the system of checks and balances of free and reasoned debate. We need leaders who are above personal reproach, whose integrity is unquestioned. 
we have a leader who has a demonstrated record that illustrates these virtues, namely John J. C Cullerton. His tenure as president of the Senate began with a contentious trial of a popularly elected governor, a trial whose fair, the fairness of which was never questioned, the verdict of which was freely rendered. That began his t t tenure to remove a sitting popularly elected a governor is a grave matter, a grave matter. There can be no question about it. It can never be perceived as a formalized, legalistic coup d'etat. It has to be according to law and procedure. As far as I'm concerned, and many uh, 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 others, the reason why it has not been questioned in its fairness and integrity is because of the competence and the dedication of John Cullerton. His entire tenure has been re remarkable in the fact that the civility and the decorum of this body has been maintained. Ladies and gentlemen, in a nation and a world increasingly divided and riven by passionate attacks upon individuals or groups, or races, or creeds, by fanatic extremism marked by increasing violence, this chamber must remain a beacon of order, of reasoned debate, of a process, the hallmark of which is honesty, competence, and civility. The person who will ensure that this chamber carries out its constitutional function is John J. Cullerton. His tenure for the past three General Assemblies has been marked by distinction, competence, civility, and honesty. Your Excellency, I nominate Senator John J. Cullerton for President of the Senate. Thank you. Senator Hayne nominates Senator John J. Cullerton for President of the Senate. Senator Morrison is recognized for the purpose of seconding the nomination. Thank you, Governor Rauner, distinguished guests, members of the Illinois Senate. Today I stand with the distinct honor and privilege of seconding Senator Haynes' motion that we re-elect John J. Cullerton, President of the Illinois Senate. When I took office nearly two years ago, I did not know Senate President Cullerton very well. As a new legislator, I found an atmosphere where I was allowed to advocate freely for the people that I represent, to do what I believe is right, and to succeed. I also found a leader who was there to give advice, but not orders, a leader who represents independence, but not unruliness, a man who brings people together, finds consensus, finds compromise, and who always works to find the best possible outcome for the state of Illinois. That man, that leader, is John J. Collerton. While he has served as Senate President, we've seen some truly monumental changes in Illinois law. Under his watch, the General Assembly has reformed the state pension system twice, reformed our workers' compensation system, strengthened ethics laws, legalized gay marriage, abolished the death penalty, authorized temporary visitor driver license, found a way to help the children of immigrants pay for college, authorized to conceal carry, set strictest in the nation rules for fracking, created a pilot program for medical marijuana, reformed and expanded Medicaid, and passed an education reform law that has been hailed as a national model. I represent communities in suburban Cook and Lake Counties, but I grew up in rural Cass County. The people in Lake County and the people in Cass County want the same basic things, they want good schools, they want jobs, they want access to health care, and they want safe communities. But there are also issues that really only apply to certain areas of the state. 
In the suburbs, unlike rural areas, public transportation is a big issue. In rural areas, unlike the city and suburbs, hunting and fishing are concerns. The population is not quite evenly divided in the state between urban areas, suburban areas, and rural areas. It's racially diverse. It's linguistically diverse, religiously diverse, and culturally diverse. And I'm proud to say that our Democratic caucus represents that diversity. But that can't make John Cullerton's job any easier. He's had to build consensus, often not just among those of us who sit on this side of the aisle, but with those senators who sit on the other side of the chamber. And he's had to build consensus with the House and the governor. And he's done it with remarkable aplomb and success. This year, we're going to face many challenges. Some of them, like balance in the budget, we've seen before. Familiarity will not make that any less of a challenge. Others we can neither nor imagine nor anticipate. We have a new governor. We have new faces in the General Assembly. We have a divided government for the first time in more than a decade. And building consensus may be more difficult than ever. But with John J. Collerton as our Senate President, I'm sure we can succeed. I hope you will join me in supporting him, not only as the leader of the Democratic Caucus, but as the President of the Illinois Senate. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Morrison seconds the nomination of Senator John J. Cullerton for President of the Senate. Senator Lightford is recognized for the purpose of seconding the nomination. Thank you, Governor. Our distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, to all of our family and friends, I'm so excited to nominate our president that I lost my voice, so bear with me. I didn't want to miss the opportunity to tell you what a wonderful man John is. Not only is John a consensus builder outside of the caucus, he's a wonderful consensus building within our caucus. We come from all parts of this state with very different ideals and values and principles, and he's able to bring all of us together to come up with what's the best solution to move this state forward. He is an awesome consensus builder. John is really approachable. He's like this great guy that I don't think any of us is intimidated by his power. He does have an open door policy and he allows us to come in and share with him our ideas and values on different legislative matters. What intrigues me most about the president is his love for the legislative process. John truly loves the legislative process. He allows us to negotiate and do our due diligence even he doesn't believe in where we're headed, but he allow us to go there and then allows us to bag ourselves out <laughs> once we realize we're headed down the wrong lane. And with that, sometimes there's conflict amongst members, and I find the president to be such a, a, a consensus resolution, conflict resolution, excuse me, builder because he's able to take the time out to research our own initiatives and advocate on both sides and allow us to leave the room feeling like we are truly members here joined together and we always come up with what we think is an equitable solution. Not all presidents are able to be fair and allow you the opportunity to come up with an equitable solution. John does that very well. John is very diligent, he's a hardworking man, and during any given election cycle, he will spend most of his time raising funds. He's attended well over 100 fundraising events during this last election cycle because maintaining a supermajority is important to the president, and it's pretty important to all of us on this side of the aisle. So we appreciate him extending himself. John fights for education funding. I'm sure many of you know that's my passion, it's what I love. And the president spent years fighting for education funding. I can date you guys back to Senate Bill 750. We were trying to put $2 billion in education funding. And John stood with us and made sure that we passed that bill over to the chamber 
to the House. Not only did we pass that bill, we passed some corporate loophole bills as well that the President supported that created another $500 million. Unfortunately, those bills were not called in the other chamber, but it allowed us to know in the caucus that education is a top priority of not only members in this caucus, but the President as well. John is, has the characteristics of a kind man. Many of you know that he thinks he's funny. He's got a great sense of humor. <laughs> and he's really centered in family. He has a lovely wife and children. And for this reason, as so many others, I am so proud to stand and second the motion of our wonderful president, John J. Collerton. Thank you very much. Senator Lightford seconds the nomination of Senator John J. Cullerton for President of the Senate. Senator Murphy is recognized for the purpose of placing a name in nomination. Thank you, uh, Governor, very much. I appreciate that. This is, uh, this is such a wonderful occasion. We've got family, friends here, new members, uh, old members. Not looking at anybody in particular. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful occasion, and it's, if, if it ever gets old, I don't know, but it hasn't for me yet. I want to thank the people of the 27th District for giving me the chance to do this. It's an honor. I want to thank my family for being here with me today. I especially want to take this opportunity to welcome Governor Rauner to the Senate. Uh, I cannot tell you how happy I am to see you here, sir. My, my, my friends on the other side of the aisle have never had trouble with me uh, speaking for them, and I'm sure this is another such occasion. Uh, we all want you to succeed, Governor, because if you succeed, our state succeeds. There are a lot of statesmen on both sides of the aisle in this chamber right now, and I think we all want to see Illinois be the best it can be for the people that send us here. Uh, the challenges we face are great. And I want to say our caucus stands here today ready to help our friends on the other side of the aisle and you as well, uh, Governor. And to lead us in that endeavor, I am proud to nominate my friend Christine Redonio for Senate President. In Chris, uh, we provide for you, Governor, a strong, loyal, experienced leader that you can trust. For our friends on the other side of the aisle here in the Senate, in Chris, uh, we present to you a leader who is a true statesman, uh, somebody that you know and respect and with whom you have done great things before, such as a number of the things that Senator Morrison referenced previously, uh, and that we believe will have the opportunity to do great things with you in the future as well. And for us on our side of the aisle, for the Senate Republicans, uh, I put forward a leader who is inclusive, whose door is always open, uh, who has a management style that's collaborative and welcoming. And for these reasons, I nominate my good friend Christine Redonio, and I ask you all to please join me in supporting her for Senate President. Thank you very much. Senator Murphy nominates Senator Christine Redonio for President of the Senate. Senator Barrickman is recognized for the purpose of seconding the nomination. Thank you, uh, Mr. Governor. Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, I rise to second the nomination of Senator Christine Redonio for the office of Senate President for the 99th General Assembly. Uh, but first of all, let me welcome all of our guests today, those of you in the galleries above and all of our distinguished guests, family, friends who've uh, joined us on the floor. To our newest members, uh, Senator Anderson, Bennett, Naibo, uh, you have worked tremendously hard to get here, and you have earned your place in this fine chamber, the Illinois State Senate. We all welcome you and look forward to working with you, and I know that you will serve your districts well. Today is a, uh, today's a day of celebration, 
and uh, we, we welcome our, our families and friends to the Capitol. I'm sure there will be a lot of laughing and joking uh, today, and, and, and it's really a, it's a, it's a feel-good day in Illinois where we celebrate the government that represents us. But we know that with these events today, we are simply setting the stage for what will be a historic year in Illinois government. Just 48 hours ago, we inaugurated a new governor who we are honored to have with us today. Uh, now we must elect our Senate president and then embark on this next chapter of our state's history book, what we call the 99th General Assembly. Undoubtedly, the men and women who have preceded us here often use the phrase that the greatest challenges lie ahead of us. And this phrase has never been as true as it is today. Our challenges are mind-boggling when one considers the billions of dollars of unpaid bills, a 100 plus billion dollar pension shortfall, a paralyzed economy. The, the people of our state are suffering from the decisions made by their government and they're looking to us for solutions. And so as we look at, at what lies ahead for us, we know that Senator Christine Redonio is ready to lead. Our problems require bipartisan solutions and bipartisan leadership. And time and time again, Senator Redonio has demonstrated her willingness to work with all 59 members of this chamber she sits on this side of the aisle, but she never hesitates to reach across the aisle to find a friend or an ally. If we are to move Illinois forward and let our, let our economy grow, it will come through legislative action embraced by both political parties, working together for the common good. I know that Senator Redonio's commitment will result in the bipartisan cooperation that this chamber needs to improve our state. On this side of the aisle, we call ourselves Republicans. And, but within our Republican Party today, and within our own Senate Republican Caucus, we have wide-ranging views and opinions on the many issues of public policy. We come from districts that are quite different. In fact, Senator Redonio's district is distinctly different from the one that I represent. Hers is a much more geographically compact district touching parts of DePage, Will, and Cook Counties. Mine, a sprawling rural district that encompasses all our parts of six counties and stretches some hundred plus miles east to west. But regardless of where we come from, regardless of our, the opinions for which we may have, Senator Redonio's leadership style welcomes us. Senator Redonio's type of leadership embraces our many opinions. She encourages us to speak up, and we are a stronger caucus as a result. Senator Redonio's continued leadership will serve not only our caucus, but this entire chamber and our state well. Therefore, Mr. Governor, it is my honor and my privilege to second the nomination of Se Senator Christine Redonio for Senate President for the 99th General Assembly. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Senator Berrickman seconds the nomination of Senator Christine Redonio for President of the Senate. Senator Naibo is recognized for the purpose of seconding the nomination. Uh, thank you, Mr. Governor. And um, first off, let me tell you how much it, it, it feels so good to finally say that, Governor Rahner, so welcome. Um, I am so excited to uh, nominate Christine Redonio. Uh, in fact, I was so excited I almost spoke out of turn if you were watching. Um, and for weeks I've been nervous about this speech. Uh, I thought I had the unenviable task of following Senator Murphy. But since I have to speak after Senator Berrickman, I feel a lot better, so. <laughs> and of course, Jason knows that he's a good friend and that's just a jab for an intended effect. Uh, Mr. Governor, we, we are very excited and honored to be here today. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, 
This is the first week in over a decade uh, that this body has convened in an atmosphere free of one party rule. The people of this great state have clearly indicated that they want bipartisan government, bipartisan cooperation, and bipartisan solutions. The Republican members of this chamber welcome that mandate. We look forward to working with you, our Democratic colleagues in this chamber, our colleagues in the House, to give the people what they want. A government that spends their money, but not too much, wisely, and that creates opportunities for all residents. And I can think of no better way for this body to demonstrate a unified commitment to these goals than by selecting a member of the minority party as its president. But not just any member. You'd be hard pressed to find anyone in this chamber who is more committed to cooperation and collaboration than Senator Christine Redonio. I first met Christine 15 years ago, and what I've seen since then has shown me that she exemplifies what we should all expect of a legislator and an elected official. She listens instead of lectures. She searches for consensus rather than confrontation, and she puts results over rhetoric. So as we start this new session, in this new era of shared responsibility, let's set the right tone. Let's accomplish great things together, and let's begin by electing the minority leader, Senator Christine Redonio, as the president of this body. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Senator Naibo seconds the nomination of Senator Christine Rodonio for President of the Senate. If there are no further nominations, Senator Silverstein is recognized for the purpose of making a motion. Thank you, Mr. Governor. I move that the nomination for the Office of President of the Illinois, General, Illinois State Senate for the 99th General Assembly be closed. Senator Silverstein has moved that nominations be closed. All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye, those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries and the nominations are closed. The secretary will call the roll of the senators. Each senator should answer the roll by stating one of the names nominated or by voting present. Please call the roll, Mr. Secretary. The results of the roll call are as follows. Senator John J. Cullerton, 35 votes. Senator Christine Redonio, 20 votes. I'm personally stunned by this outcome. Senator John J. Cullerton, having received the constitutionally required number of votes, is hereby declared elected president of the Senate of the 99th General Assembly. Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I, John J. Cullerton. I, John J. Cullerton. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the Office of President of the Senate. Of the Office of President of the Senate. The best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. 
I would like to thank Illinois Supreme Court Justice Mary Jane Tice for administering the oath of office today. 24 years ago, she swore me in when I was a new senator, and she was a circuit court judge. This is the fourth time she's sworn me in as Senate President. I'd like to thank Father Brendan Curran for the invocation and Rabbi Moshe Francis for the benediction. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been re-elected President of the Illinois Senate, but I want to introduce the Speaker of my house, my wife, Pam Cullerton. Now, now isn't, isn't she cute? Look at that. I, I, she likes that picture. I took it. <laughs> to me, it seems like it was only a couple years ago that she and I were married. But you know, Governor Rauner, this past fall, we were watching TV, and this campaign ad comes on. And she watches it, and she mutters aloud, 100 years of Cullerton, tell me about it. Lucky for me, she doesn't support term limits. <laughs> I'd like to welcome a few members of my family who are here today. Our daughter Maggie and her fiance, Brian Hooper, our son Garrett, and my sisters Peggy and Trish, and Trish's daughter, Megan. Uh, it was Trish's son, Michael Lynch, who sang the national anthem. And you may have seen him on The Voice. And today he had to leave for the United Center because he's singing the national anthem at tonight's Bulls game. So we were the warm-up for him. <laughs> I also have a special guest today. I'm a partner at the law firm of Thompson Coburn. The firm's chairman recently said to me, why aren't you ever here? <laughs> and I said, well, I've been busy. I'm the president of the Illinois Senate. And he said, really? <laughs> Prove it. OK, so ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm Illinois Senate welcome to the chairman of Thompson Coburn, Thomas J. Minogue, and his wife, Rebecca. I should mention that he's from Missouri, where he pays a 6% income tax. <laughs> so he's enjoying his visit to our low-tax state. <laughs> and by the way, Tom, you don't know this, but on January 1st, our tax rate dropped 25%, which is the largest tax cut in the history of the state of Illinois, and I'm proud to say I sponsored that bill. In addition to Justice Tice, we are honored to be joined today by several other members of the Illinois Supreme Court. Please welcome Chief Justice Rita Garman. <laughs> Justice Robert Thomas. <laughs> and Justice Lloyd Carmeier. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I also want to recognize our new Lieutenant Governor, Evelyn Sanguinetti. <laughs> welcome to the Senate. I'd like to welcome back to the Senate our new State Treasurer, Mike Frerix. <laughs> now I see why our two parties have trouble seeing eye to eye. <laughs> Mr. Treasurer, uh, I've been up here thinking you're in the wrong seat. Uh, you know, we never passed a Senate resolution congratulating you on your victory and years of service. It's not because we ran out of time. We didn't have the votes. But I promise you I'm going to work hard to get that passed this next session. I'm also honored to have my predecessor in this post here with us, with his wife, former President Emil Jones, Jr., and his wife, Dr. Lori Jones. Applause 
I'd also like to thank Springfield Mayor Michael Houston for the city's hospitality. Mayor. <laughs> Mayor Houston is a fiscal conservative, but he'd like you to spend like a liberal while you're here in town. <laughs> Sadly, there is something and someone <clears throat> missing here today. We lost one of Illinois' treasures last month with the passing of former Senate colleague, Comptroller Judy Barr Topinka. I'd like to think that if you listen closely, you can still hear her laughter, perhaps a little polka music, echoing through the halls of the Capitol. There will never be another Judy Barr Topinka. Those of us who knew her and worked with her, like the state of Illinois itself, are forever better for that association. I would ask that the Senate rise and recognize a moment of silence for our friend Judy Barr Topinka. Thank you. Six years ago, the Senate began a new chapter when Senator Bredonio and I were first elected to lead our respective caucuses. Although we sit on different sides of the aisle, we've worked to turn this state around and restore pride in Illinois. It's been hard work. We've had some intense debates. But we've accomplished a lot together. I see you've updated your picture. <laughs> that was from 1980. I was in the house. Maybe it's time for me to update mine, too. <laughs> Leader Redonio, given our roles, it might not be obvious, but um, uh, I admire your personal strength and your leadership in the face of adversity. This past year, you have been an inspiration for all of us. I want to thank you for your help and look forward to continuing to work with you. To every member here today, I'd like to offer an invitation or perhaps a challenge, depending upon your viewpoint. Good ideas come from every one of our 59 members. I would hope you know by now that my door is open and more often than not, we work together. Each and every one of us is an honest, hardworking, ethical public official committed to improving the lives of the people of this great state. This 99th collection of Illinois Senators has an average length of service in this chamber of 7.8 years. We are a healthy mix of new ideas and institutional knowledge. And since everyone has been here before except for two people, at this point I'm pretty much just talking to Senator Anderson and Bennett. Gentlemen, welcome to the Senate. In case you don't know, my office is in room three 27 right here in the back hallway. The men's room is right over there <laughs> behind that door. The green button <laughs> is to vote yes. The red button is to vote no. Senator Anderson, I really don't think you're going to be needing the red button. If there's ever a question, just push green. You'll be fine. <laughs> Senator Bennett, Get used to pushing that red button. <laughs> I'd like to thank Senator Lightford, Morrison, and Hain for their nominating speeches. It's amazing to me the nice things I managed to get people to say about me right before I named the leadership team and the committee chairman. <laughs> By the way, Senator Hain offered to deliver his speech in Latin, <laughs> which his native tongue. I declined the offer. My apologies, Father Curran, but I feared not everyone would be able to follow along. So I would like to welcome Governor Bruce Rauner to the Illinois Senate. Governor, thank you for presiding over today's ceremony, and congratulations on your victory in swearing in a few days ago. Honestly, we were a little concerned about you being here. You see, the Senate has a strict dress code, and gentlemen must wear a jacket, we were afraid you'd wear the Carhartt. <laughs> Governor, you face tough challenges. I want you to know that I look forward to working with you. But first, a request. As you've seen, this is a pretty magnificent building. 
I'm supposed to ask that you park the van somewhere else. <laughs> Governor, I understand you want to shake things up. Well, you've come to the right place because this is the Illinois Senate and we're not exactly strangers to seismic activity. We've been shaking things up for a number of years. Um, but after hearing your inaugural address, I thought it would be good, and I felt feel the need to spend some time talking about the important things that we've done and the progress that we've made. Six years ago today, a different governor presided over this ceremony, and that same day we began his impeachment trial and later removed him from office and banned him from ever running again. It was bipartisan, unanimous action. This Senate has produced a proud list of bipartisan accomplishments since that day. We were the first to act on marriage equality. The Senate took that vote on Valentine's Day 2013. It took the House another nine months to catch up. Gone is the death penalty system that had freed more than it had condemned and had become a national embarrassment. We grew tired of waiting for Washington, so we pushed immigration reform here. Back in 2012, Leader Redonio and I co-sponsored a system that allows nearly a quarter million immigrants to be tested, licensed, and insured drivers. We have forged ahead in a bipartisan spirit when we believe action is needed and have time and again put the needs of the state ahead of politics. We approved a $31 billion construction program that is building roads and schools in every part of our state investing in our economic future and providing thousands of jobs. We worked together to pass overdue McCormick Place reforms that, had, uh, that once again established Chicago as a convention destination that brings millions of dollars into the state's economy. Our education reforms addressing tenure and performance standards became a national model. Our overhaul of the workers' compensation system produced the sharpest recommended reduction in employer insurance premiums in the nation, down 24% since 2012. We put together a bipartisan Medicaid reform package that saved taxpayers billions. Some claim that they can wring billions more in savings out of the system. Have at it. I look forward to that proposal being brought to the Senate for a vote rather than being touted in press releases. We passed not one but two pension reform proposals to make up for nearly a century of inaction that left our state in a precarious financial situation. All of those accomplishments were done with bipartisan votes. There was one, however, that was not. That was the temporary increase in our tax rates to pay those pension debts that had been ignored by too many for too long and to provide funding so the comptroller could start paying overdue bills to social service agencies and other providers. And that brings us to today and the start of a new session. If education is indeed our top priority, it's time to back it up. Last year, the Senate started the debate over the growing divide among resources and opportunities in our public schools. It's time to bridge that gap. We should rebuild the path to college for the growing number of middle class families unsure if they can afford the higher cost of higher education. And we need to ensure parents that their children will be safe on campus. Count me among those who believe that in some areas our bureaucracy has grown too cumbersome. Today, if you want to start a company in Illinois, you have to file paperwork with an array of state agencies, ranging from the Secretary of State to the Department of Revenue, to the Department of Labor, to the Department of Employment Security, and possibly the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency. It's a convoluted system that doesn't make sense. So Governor Rauner, I want to work with you to provide one-stop shopping. Governor, <laughs> Governor, we also need to raise the minimum wage. The same voters who sent us here want a higher minimum wage in Illinois. It's time to deliver. Now, immigration is still stalled in Washington. We need to keep moving forward here. A license to drive was the first step for our immigrant neighbors. I'd like to offer them a license to dream. We need to change state law so that talented students, regardless of their immigration background, can go on to law school 
and become licensed practicing attorneys in Illinois. Years ago, I was a public defender in Cook County. Here in the Senate, I spent years on the Judiciary Committee, and more recently, I helped push a top-to-bottom review of our criminal laws to try to ensure punishments are proportional to the crimes. Just like the death penalty system, too many have lost faith in our criminal justice system, believing it no longer serves or protects their communities. Across the country, states are rethinking the role and the cost of prisons in the face of growing budget pressures. Our own state finances demand that we have an honest discussion about who we are filling our prisons with and why. So today I'm announcing the creation of a special Senate committee consisting of an equal number of Republicans and Democrats. This committee will be responsible for finding ways to restore justice to our criminal system and ensure that our Department of Corrections exists to correct problems, not warehouse them. So ladies and gentlemen, the people we represent want us to solve problems, improve the quality of life, and open doors of economic and educational opportunity for their families. I trust everyone is up to the challenge. Enjoy your day, and let's get to work. The Illinois Senate is now in session. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, at this uh, time, I would move by uh, acclamation and with unanimous consent of the Senate Republican members to declare uh, Christine Redonio of Lamont Senate Minority Leader for the 99th uh, General Assembly. Thank you. Senator LaHood requests unanimous consent on behalf of the Republican members of the Senate to declare Senator Christine Redonio Minority Leader of the Senate of the 99th General Assembly. Is leave granted? Leave is granted. Senator Christine Redonio is declared Minority Leader. Congratulations. The chair recognizes Senator Christine Redonio. Thank you, Mr. President. First of all, congratulations. It is never easy to go after someone who is a bona fide stand-up comedian, so you make this difficult for me. Um, however, I share um, your pride in the fact that in this chamber we do have a history of working together, certainly trying very hard to maintain decorum and professionalism, which is critical because we do in fact have disagreements sometimes on the issues. And I do think that is a direct responsibility of your leadership and um, hopefully mine as well, so thank you. Um, I want to thank the members of the body for the opportunity. It's an enormous honor to be elected to serve by all of you who are in fact leaders in your own right. Um, this is a, an election of leaders amongst leaders. It's a challenging and it's a unique time to be able to serve as leader. We have change upon us. It's been 12 years since we've had a two-party system in the state of Illinois. As I look out at this chamber, I see that there are only 14 of the 59 senators in this chamber who have ever served in a two-party system. And on our side of the aisle, we only have five senators that have served with the governor in their own party. The election of Governor Rauner um, changes the political dynamic dramatically. Now we can hope, but we cannot assume that that change will result in better outcomes for our state. I know that Governor Rauner will do his part to try to make the changes that will make Illinois a better place to live for all of its citizens, but we in the legislature have to do the same. We in the legislature have to do our part to seize the opportunity that this change has given us. It is not automatic. We cannot, we must not let this opportunity pass us by. We and the mem members of the Senate must work to bridge the differences and find common ground in order to make this state a better place for all the people that call it home. We have, in the Senate, as has been articulated by a number of people, had some bipartisan successes. But the public is saying, more of this, please. They really want to see us work together to solve the problems. 
The people in this state deserve no less than that. Now, not only will the citizens that we represent be watching what we do with hope, although, albeit there is some cynicism after what they've been through over the last several years, but the rest of the country is watching us as well. The rest of the, of the world, in fact, is watching us. The poor management decisions and dire financial condition of this state has made Illinois the subject of criticism and the butt of jokes in our local media, in national media such as the Wall Street Journal, and even in international media such as The Economist, which is based in London. Illinois is getting a really bad rap, and we deserve better, and we need to work together to change those perceptions. Decisions made by one party with one party control for a dozen years have led to problems that now required a renewed commitment to cooperation and compromise if we are to make Illinois great again. As a Republican leader, I pledge to keep focused on moving our state forward and ask all of you on both sides of the aisle to do the same. In order to maximize the opportunity that the change before us has presented, we must keep focused on that goal of moving forward, even though we may have very different ideas about what that path forward looks like. This is to acknowledge that we will have some very genuine differences of opinion. But in my role as leader, I will ask Republicans and Democrats as well to be respectful, to please choose our battles carefully, and most importantly, be genuinely open to ideas that may not be our own. We will only be successful if our knee-jerk response to other people's ideas is not to fall back into the comfort of partisan rhetoric and run for the cover of special interests. So again, I offer my congratulations and appreciation to all of you. I'm truly honored to be able to represent the people of my 41st district in the Senate at this really amazing time in history. I'm humbled by your faith in me um, as a Senate Republican leader, and I finally want to wish congratulations to everyone today who was elected and re-elected. Um, enjoy the rest of the day. This is a festive, fun day, and let's come back in two weeks and work together to get our state headed in the right direction. Thank you very much. You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation form to provide gavel to gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois.